Oh man, that's a lot of light behind me, isn't it? All right, looks like the live chat is started. We're gonna wait a few minutes to get everybody in here. I really wish there wasn't that much light shining behind me. Um, let me know if you can hear me down in the chat. And we're just gonna wait a few minutes while more people start rolling in. Let's see here. You guys can hear me okay? Braxton, can you hear me okay? David, can you hear me okay? Okay. We can hear you, good, thanks Brian. David, thanks. Alexander, thank you. Let me turn off my uh, sound here. There we go. All right, welcome. Um, let me get my chat pulled up here so I can kind of, let's see here, pop out chat. Uh, well, uh, welcome everyone who's uh, here for the live stream uh, here on YouTube to discuss, I'm gonna put this maybe more right. Bill, what's up? Thank you for uh, being willing to moderate for me. Let's see, that's pretty centered. There we go. <laughs> see there, there we go. All right, uh, yeah, Bill, thank you for moderating and, and thanks to everybody else who's made. I hope you guys enjoyed that last video I did. Um, you know what, it was an easy video to make. So, so man, it was a lot easier to edit and film and uh, just talk about the product I use. So, man, I'll take it. I, I, uh, I've had a, a rough time getting bikes to demo lately. So I've just been so busy with family and work. As my kids have gotten older, it's super busy in the summers. But um, uh, I've got a couple bikes on my list uh, right now. I've got uh, the, the new Yeti SB140 lined up. I've got the new Santa Cruz uh, Hightower lined up. So those should be coming in the next couple weeks. A few things I wanna just say at the beginning as people start shuffling in here is, if you don't follow me on Instagram, stop what you're doing right now, head over to Instagram and follow me on Instagram. Um, the sooner I can get my Instagram over 10,000 followers, the more I can start doing more over there, which is so much easier to upload stories and video there. And I'll keep doing YouTube obviously, and, and my goal is to do uh, two to three videos a month here on YouTube, but, um, Anyway, Instagram, that'd be a, a huge help. Sorry for the lighting in here, guys. That's just terrible. So uh, I'm gonna get to you guys' questions, uh, not only in the live chat right here that you have, but also uh, uh, from the video that we posted yesterday. Uh, so th those will all be answered here soon. So first thing is, uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, head over to Instagram and follow me there. Um, uh, the second thing is, is I have, uh, I've not really taken on any sponsors or anything like that, um, even though as the channel's grown, more and more people have reached out to me. Uh, but I did take on, I guess, a sponsor. Um, I should probably, let's see here, if I can find it. Bear with me just a second. I'm embarrassed to say I can't find it. <laughs> but uh, you guys probably saw my video, uh, the, the, the Bites, the Energy Bites by Trail Truffles. So uh, it's, a, it's a great little energy, uh, it's like a cliff bar, but uh, kind of packed into a little bite. Anyway, check them out, Trail Truffles. They're offering people 20% off uh, using the checkout code yum yum at checkout. So. <laughs> If you want to go check those out, they're really good. Anyway, uh, they don't pay me anything. They just give me free products. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, anyway, I had a lot of fun making that video yesterday. Uh, I don't know. I, I bike a ton. I've been biking for 25 years, and it's, it's kind of fun to share that with you. I, I missed a few things, though, on the video because I felt kind of rushed. 
to, to get, um, I guess to get through the video without making it too long. And so I felt kind of rushed. So there are some things that I'm going to address uh, that I didn't really talk about and I kind of regret having not talked about them. So let me hop in the chat here and uh, see who's in here. Uh, Brian, Dave, and Alexander, some of the first guys to log in. Uh, Nathan from Chicago. Wow. Uh, welcome, Nathan from Chicago. Uh, Eric and Garrett are here. Uh, Bill W., thanks for moderating. Um, as people trickle in here, we'll kind of start getting to some questions. But uh, uh, Daniel in Minnesota, what's up? Um, Ian wants to know which I prefer, prefer between the Ritmo and the Mega Tower. We'll get to that probably. Um, where are you guys from? Post up where you're from. Uh, Western New Jersey, Wade. Or excuse me, New York. Apologies. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Braxton, uh, Kurt. We got Ryan in Houston. What's up? Brian T's from Southern California. I was just riding in Santa Cruz just a couple months ago. Kurt in Las Vegas. Uh, Trailblazer in Idaho. Um, well, everyone, thanks for, for shuffling in here. Uh, yeah, first things first is I, I've been riding the, the heck out of that Ripley. That Ibis Ripley is just such a capable bike and having a couple different sets of tires to, to ride, um, depending on the terrain that I'm in, man, it's just crazy what a difference tires makes. I mean, before you go out and buy a new bike, maybe try out a couple different sets of tires and see what you think. Got Ryan in Saratoga Springs, Utah. Nice, buddy. Um, okay, let's see here. Iron Ore in Vermont. All right, well, um, a few of the things that I just want to quickly cover. I talked about these um, Troy Design uh, Speed, or excuse me, Sprint gloves. And although I did address a couple of things that I really liked about them, more detail about these gloves. They're very lightweight. Uh, like I said, on the on the no, on the thumb piece, where you always wipe your nose, it's super super soft. I love that about this glove. But the real reason I will not ride a glove that doesn't have this. It's hard to see on this camera, but the palm is all one piece of material. There's no seams of material sewed together. I've worn gloves that have like they put like padding in or like a place that looks like where your knuckles will go. Look at your gloves. If there's any stitches or sewing where seams of, of fabric are put together, man, those after two or three hours or any longer rides, they just chew your hands up. Find a glove. I like the Troy Lee Design uh, Sprint, but any glove that's just one piece of material on the palm, uh, that's, that's what I look for. Also, I'm not sponsored by Smith. I just wear Smith glasses. I also have a pair of these Oakleys uh, that I wear. Uh, the problem is, is sometimes there's too much pressure back here behind my ears just for my head shake. So uh, these were like really popular the last couple of years, so I bought some, but I almost always wear my Smiths. That's why you'll see those sometimes in my videos. Um, and then the last thing is these Lava Stair packs. Uh, I talked a lot about this pack. Um, I love it. I've had this for over a year. I've worn the heck out of it. I've got a couple of buddies who have them. Um, the guy who, who owns Lab Austere reached out to me and offered a discount code uh, if you go to his website to buy it. So for those of you who've probably gone over there already and bought it, I'm sorry, but he's gonna offer, well, it's on my phone, dang it. He texted me. Um, I think he's gonna offer you 20 or 25% off if you buy these. Um, and uh, I don't think you'd be disappointed. I've loved this thing. Again, it's, it's not like a backpack, it's a minimalist. This section right here, you can see, it's about as big as my hand. It, it'll fit all of the essentials, your food, some candy bar or, or granola bar or trail truffle or whatever you have, um, some shot blocks or whatever you use out on the trail, plus your tube and then all the other essentials. It'll fit all that stuff. And then, you know, if you only need one water bottle, then you have a whole second section here to put stuff in. But, so use discount code Yum Yum, so capital Y-U-M, capital Y-U-M, and I'll put it in the description below this live stream, you know, when we're done. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be 20 or 25% off, so dang, that's a good deal. Um, other things that I didn't talk about, well, I did talk about, but 
these are my shoes. I should have thought to take a picture of my shoes and edit those into that video yesterday, but these are the 510s I shoes. I thought, I, I thought they were the pros. They're not. These are the Danny McCaskills, which I'm pretty sure are the exact same as the pros, except for this is kind of a suede finish. I don't wear these very often. I wear these 10 or 15 times a year type of thing, or maybe 20 times a year, I don't know. But I don't know if I'd buy the Danny McCaskill version again. These are suede, and when they get dirty, they're super hard to clean. I think the Pro is like a leather or something that cleans up better, but they're lightweight, and that's why I liked them. But after owning them, the suede doesn't clean up very well. The other thing, sorry, not sure what you guys were hoping to get out of this live stream, but these are the things that I missed in that video that I thought I should talk about. These are the uh, uh, Trailer Design Ace shorts. I wear a size 30, but the reason why I love them is the crotch on them is super high. So the crotch, the bottom of the crotch is at my crotch. There's not like a bunch of fabric hanging down. Other shorts that I've owned, basically every other short that I've owned besides these, the crotch hangs down too low. I have to keep pulling them up and then I pull them up like over my belly button. I want it to be tight to my crotch so that's not getting hung up on my saddle at all. And I'm sure you guys want the same thing, but uh, that's what I love about them. The crotch is high and out of the way of my saddle. All of the, there's a link to the, the shorts that I wear in the description of the gear and bike check video that I did. If you use that link to Competitive Cyclist, Competitive Cyclist pays me. So I don't make it hardly any money on YouTube, but um, I make money when people do live chats and, and do their money here, which you don't have to do, but but if you guys are gonna buy the shorts online somewhere anyway, and you buy them through my link on Competitive Cyclist, they pay me. So, and again, it's not very much money. I think this entire year I've made like 600 bucks. I don't mind being fully transparent. I think I've made $671. I just looked it up, is what I've paid, made so far from people buying bikes or product through Competitive Cyclist using my links. So that's what those links are there for. Most of you guys who are on YouTube a lot probably know that that's how creators like us get paid. But anyway, that's how we get paid. And then the shirt, I misspoke in the video. This is not a Dakin shirt. The brand is Gyro. Giro? Yeah, Giro. It doesn't say which model it is. It's called the Renew Series Giro shirt. It's super lightweight. I dig it. So you can buy this from Salt Cycles, either locally or you can call up Salt Cycles and buy it. Uh, I think they sell them for like 50 or 60 bucks. Or you can just get online and buy a Giro, I think it's called the New Series. Let me just double check. The Renew Series. I didn't have a link to that. Maybe I need to find a link to that and put it on there. But uh, anyway, I guess the biggest things I wanna tell you is the gloves, there's no seams in the palms. And then my shorts, the crotch is really high. So my, my, the fabric of my shorts are not getting hung up in my saddle or getting in the way of me riding in any way. That's what I like about them. And they're, they're tight around my thighs too. Um, geez, that's about, that's about everything. I was also going to mention, every time I do a, do a new bike demo, I go through and obviously set my sag and put the air pressure. And then I also measure uh, the millimeters here. So when I get a bike, I bring it to my house, I set it up in my uh, front room, you know, to, to my weight, to get it kind of ballpark. And then I go in my backyard and I've got like a section of about a five foot drop with three rocks that I ride down. And that gives me, I'm able to kind of mimic what my, my trail ride might be like for that day. And I spend about 20 minutes just setting the bike up in my yard uh, going off the curb and off those rocks in the backyard, getting the bike set up to where I can get it pretty good. And then when I get out on the trail, usually within 15, 20 minutes, I have a pretty good idea of where the bike is. So it's, it's not bad. Michael wants some high crotch shorts, please. <laughs> I probably didn't think about that. All right, let me hop in the chat here for a minute. And then we'll start talking uh, questions and stuff. Um, uh, Ryan, good to have you here. Benjamin, Labosteria Yum Yum discount code is 25%. Oh, Benjamin, I don't know how you know that, but maybe you just went to their website and bought it. But yeah, if you put the Yum Yum discount code in there, it looks like it's going to be 20 or 25%, maybe 25%. 
Uh, Biker Frax. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk SB140 probably. I got that bike coming. Um, looks like a lot, people have a lot of questions about the Troy Lee Design shorts. They're the Ace 2.0 shorts or Ace shorts, and they're awesome. They're they're really awesome. Um, uh, last thing we're going to talk about before we get into questions is salt cycles, carbon wheels. So I, I brushed over how I, I have those on my Ripley. I also have those wheels on my Ripmo. I have a Ripley and a Ripmo right now. Although the Ripmo is going to be going up for sale here in about three or four weeks. And, uh, the carbon wheels I have are custom made from salt cycles. They just have the carbon hoops and they put whatever spokes you want on there. So you can go super lightweight sport spokes or affordable spokes can't have both and then you can choose your hubs you can do i9 uh, torch or, or i9 um, what are the new i9s called hydra um, i9 hydras i always do the dt swiss 240s i just like them i i like them a lot uh, you can do hope hubs you can do dt swiss 350s you can do a shimano hub which would be more affordable those things spin forever not as high of an engagement but the point is, is you can choose your hub and they can build it up. They, they can go 35 millimeter internal width, 31, 30, 29, or 25 are the widths that they have. So I'm like, for example, on the Yeti SB100 that I had, I had 25 millimeter internal widths and those wheels built up at like 1300 grams. It was insane, crazy light. To give you an idea, I think the Santa Cruz reserve wheels with I9 hubs or DT Swiss 350 hubs, are around 1,900 grams, so almost a pound or pound and a half more. Um, the wheels that I have on, on both these bikes are the 31 millimeter internal diameter carbon wheels with super lightweight spokes and DT Swiss 240 hubs. And I think they'll sell you those for about $1,300 or maybe $1,200, depending on the spokes that you do. Mine built out to about 1500 grams, which is super crazy light. Um, you know, you could probably do a DT Swiss 350 hub, which is an excellent hub. Your wheels would probably come in at about 1700 grams, and I'll bet you'd be about a thousand dollars, which is incredible. And they have a good warranty. So, if you're local, go check them out. If you're looking for carbon wheels, check them out. I had a ton of questions about that, uh, either private emails or uh, uh, direct messages about those. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I'd get so many questions about that. So I wanted to address that real quick. Um, yeah. All right. What do you guys want to talk about? Michael Glidewell says, I always order stuff from competitive cyclists, uh, and try to use your links, uh, from now on, dude, thank you. That will help me out a lot. Um, you know, I don't do Patreon and, uh, I would love to do less ads on these videos, but I mean, that's how I make money and can kind of justify doing this. But um, yeah, if you, if you follow those links, it helps me. I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, what do you guys, uh, what should we talk about here? If you've commented earlier in the chat, I'm not going to go back and read it all. Um, so maybe repost your questions if you have, if you have a question you want to talk about. So I'm going to start, um, uh, let's start with Michael, uh, Glide wheels come. Where do you get your carbon hoops from? We talked about that salt cycles. So uh, just call up salt cycles and, and, and ask them. I would love it if Coco Joy reached out to me and gave me a hookup on some drinks because we drink a ton of these in my house. Okay, let's get into the questions. Uh, Dale says, you can buy the SRAM access derailleur separately now, order one today. Oh, he's probably talking about building access on the cheap. Yeah, you can build access on the cheap by just doing just, uh, just the shifter and the derailleur and bam, you've got, uh, you've got access, which by the way, having access on my Ripley has absolutely ruined me. When I get on other bikes and ride now with mechanical shifting, look, I hate to complain about XX1 and X01 Eagle, but man, access is incredible. Um, okay. So Peter asks, have I ridden the new high tower? No, I haven't yet. My, the, the rep who I normally get the bikes from, uh, he had to lend them out to a bunch of guys for a demo in Idaho or something. And I just haven't seen him yet. So I guess, uh, a week or two away from now, although I got some big news. 
<laughs> on Thursday, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this because I talked about it a little bit. But on Thursday, I got a vasectomy. So most of you are adults. I think most of my audience uh, and the people who watch my stuff are adults. But I got a vasectomy on Thursday. And honestly, the procedure, it wasn't that bad. It took like 15 minutes. I was super nervous going into the... Uh, uh, the urology office, but the doctor was super kosher or <laughs> kosher, casual and just chill and just did his thing. 15, 20 minutes, I was out of there. Um, and then the recovery, I spent two days just sitting on the couch watching movies. Um, I edited the the gear review video. I've got like three other videos I still need to edit, but um, I just chilled, iced my nuts for a little bit, uh, tried to take it super easy. And today's day four. I feel great. I went to work for probably four or five hours today and it was great. So uh, anyway, I got up a second. So it's going to be two or three weeks before I can ride the uh, the high tower. <laughs> and the, I've got the Yeti SB140 lined up, ready to go. But it's going to be, I'm going to give it another week or so before I start riding again. I just want to take the recovery process real serious and make sure I don't have any problems uh, long term. So yeah, I got, I got snipped. So uh yeah, I guess if you're if you're SNP, then I uh, I'm, I'm a part of the club now. I do not have a discount code for the vasectomy. I paid cash for it. It was six hundred dollars, which I thought was a bargain. I called four or five different places, and they ranged from about eight hundred to a thousand dollars. But this this place said if you're not going to use your insurance, we'll just do six hundred dollars. So I was like, done. So I did it. Um, we have three children: a seven-year-old, nine-year-old, and a three-year-old. And we've given it three years since our last kid, and we are sure we are done. So our family is complete, the five of us. Okay, back to the question. Sorry for the sidetrack. Um, okay, next is Nathan. Our Mach 4 SL. I'm not sure what he's asking about the Mach 4. Sorry, ask your question again. Corey, uh, why are you selling your HD4? Oh, man, I probably shouldn't have built up the HD4. I wanted to do a custom... MTB Yum Yum bike and keep it for a long time. I, I just, I, I didn't fall in love with the paint job. It just didn't turn out quite how I hoped. I love the bike, but I've always got so many bikes to ride. I mean, you guys got to realize I've got, I've got six bikes sitting right here in my living room right now. I don't have time to ride my own bikes, let alone all the demo bikes. So Man, just have I just I I kind of got out in front of my skis a little bit on the on the HD4. I wanted to build up this cool custom bike. Anyway, if anyone is interested in my Ibis HD4, it's for sale. It's a bargain, and you know, I don't know. I'm probably just gonna sell the parts off of it and keep the frame. Just I don't know what I'm gonna do with that thing. Anyway, yeah, the HD4 is for sale. It's not because I don't like it. I don't have time to write. You guys gotta remember. When I sell my personal bikes, I usually only buy those, pers those my actual bikes that I own because I gotta have them. I just like it so much. But the reality is, is after six months, I'm riding bikes all the time. After six months, I'm ready for something new. Like, I don't know. Plus I'm able to just get these things. That I'm getting pretty good deals on these bikes at this point in my YouTube experience, career, whatever you wanna call it. So. You know, moving on to something else is just the right thing to do for me. But, um, all right, moving on. So, sorry, Corey, that wasn't a great question. Um, what brand of bike characteristics and traits do I like? I think that's what he's asking me. I want a bike that feels as responsive and lively as possible. A big, cushy bike is fun, but you can't... I don't know. I like I like a bike that's that's snappy and, and just it it responds really quickly to my input. So that's what I look for in a bike. Now these longer travel 29ers that I've been riding for the terrain that we go on occasionally, it's just so janky. It's nice to have that extra suspension. But I like bikes that are that are real lively. Um, uh, iron or says tires why are you running ardent races all right he says it's such a lightweight thin tire it's actually not that light of a weight tire it's it's got good casing it's got uh, the exo casing and it's it's a good strong tire but it rolls really fast and in my in my conditions of my smoother trails it hooks up really well 
like surprisingly well. I really like that Arden race. So um, I had a recon race on the back of the Ripley. That thing was a dog. Uh, it rolled fast, but it was really flimsy. I had to put almost 30 PSI in that thing to make it not feel flimsy. And at that point, when I grabbed brake, it just starts skipping and sliding and bouncing off of everything. I didn't like it. So the Arden race has decent volume for a little Maxxis 2.35 tire. And it rolls really super fast. So yeah, I mean, I like the Icon too for, for that type of riding as well, but I really enjoyed the Arden race. Um, Let's see here. Uh, Ian Bern Bernardo, Bernardo, yeah, says Ritmo and Mega Tower comparison, please. Ah, man. There, the Mega Tower feels like a much bigger bike, like substantially so. Like, I can't think of a situation where I'd want to own that, that bike. Um, I felt the same way about the Yeti SB150, which I loved. And I had so much fun on the Mega Tower. Don't get me wrong, those are fun bikes. But I don't know, on the trails that I ride most of the time and where, I mean, throughout the whole Wasatch Front, the whole Salt Lake City area, there's just not a lot of places where you need that much bike. So you might as well get something that climbs a little better, feels a little bit lighter weight underneath you and responds better to your input. That's, I guess, how I feel about it. Um, if I was up doing uh, like a lift service up at Deer Valley or something, or at a, a ski resort, maybe something like the Mega Tower would be good. But but the Ripmo can still handle all the big chunky trails, but it's a lot more lively and fun and zippy on the easier, uh, you know, flowier trails. So I guess they're not that similar in my opinion. What crank lengths do I use? I always use 170 mil. In fact, if you guys are buying a bike brand new, if you guys go into Salt Cycles to buy a bike and you're going to be spending five or six or seven or whatever, I mean, bikes are outrageous now. I can't believe how expensive bikes are. But if you're going to head into a bike shop and buy a bike and pay full price or close to full price or whatever you, your situation is at your bike shop, get, if, if it were me, I'd get shorter cranks because you're going to have less pedal strikes. Um, I mean, look at the Tour de France. There's guys running 165 cranks in the Pro Peloton so they can create, uh, I don't know why they do it, create more torque or something. I don't know. Anyway, I always, I always get the 170. That's what I like. I just don't like pedal strikes. So um, is the Mach 4, is the Pivot Mach 4 SL and the Ibis Ripley similar? No, not really. The Mach 4, that Pivot Mach 4 feels more, it feels stiffer. And it also feels like more giddy up, like race ready. Um, the Ibis Ripley is a little looser feeling and um, playful, I guess is the right word. Uh, man, it's so hard to, to find new words to describe these bikes because I talk about so many different bikes. But the Ibis Ripley is really playful, really fun. It, it's easy to ride. The, the Pivot Mach 4 SL is really like charging, like not charging, like giddy up and go. Like it wants to be pedaled hard and it's really stiff filling. Um, man, that Ibis Ripley is one of the most fun bikes I've ever ridden. It's easy to ride too and have a good time on. Um, all right, let's see. What now Are you planning to put a 140 fork on the Ripley? No, Mario, I'm not planning to put a 140 fork on my Ripley. Although if it were my only bike, I would definitely put a 140 Pike on there, or maybe even a Fox 36, but probably a Pike um, at 140 on my Ripley if it was my only bike. But I've always got another bike laying around that's a longer travel bike. All right. I might have missed some here. Ripley or SB130? Oh, oh yeah, Ripley or SB130? Man, that, that SB130 definitely feels like a little bit bigger bike. I know they're close, but those aren't as comparable as I, as I thought they might be. I think I just missed a bunch of questions. Man, you guys have a lot of questions. I'm just getting to the vasectomy part. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Nathan says he's waiting until I get my vasectomy reversed. We are done. Three kids is all we need. Okay. All right, 
Kurt says, I'm sure your wife loves the bikes in the living room. You know what? I don't think she cares anymore. She just knows that this section of the house right here, this section of the house right here, she just knows is bikes. It's just, I think she can live with that. Um, so yeah, it's the bike section of the house. Um, HD5 coming soon. You know things. I haven't heard anything about an Ibis HD5. I didn't hear anything about that. Dale? Dale says he might know something. Um, let's see here. More questions about the Ripley and the Mach 4. I don't know. Go, go watch the video again. I think I talked about it there a little bit. Um, Ryan says, what trails are good to ride a hardtail on? Dude, I used to ride hardtails exclusively for a long time and hardtails are great in fact I always tell new people who are just getting into mountain biking to get a hardtail because I think it makes you a better rider and it's also good to start out in my opinion with flat pedals just platforms because they'll teach you how to ride with your heels down and you won't pick the bike up with your with your mountain biking shoes and cleats you know and so you kind of learn how to move with the bike uh, not being clipped into it, which I think is really useful. Um, and then you learn how to ride with your heels down, which is a really good, a really good thing. It helps you create, um, it gets you behind the bike so you can create body and bike separation more uh, as needed through turns or jumping or things like that. So hardtails are a great way to begin riding. Uh, but I don't really have any interest in riding them right now. But anyway... The forecaster, the Maxis forecaster is excellent for the trails where I live. Um, someone just mentioned that. <clears throat> I'm like losing my voice. Um, yes, Benjamin, there is a Ripley and Ritmo video on the horizon. In fact, I completely filmed the whole thing. I plugged it into the computer here to start editing it, and I hated it. It was so stale and boring. Like, I just... I didn't know how to do it right, and I just didn't, I didn't really want to do it out riding. I don't know. I need to figure out a better way to do head-to-heads. And so I completely scrapped the whole thing. I deleted the whole thing. So I need to refilm Ripley versus Ritmo. I had it all ready to go, but when I started editing it, I hated it. And that's my other problem. That's why I don't post enough, guys, is I'm so critical of my content. I think, ah, oh, man, the production's so crap. Like, I have no production in my videos. Like... And I don't know how to edit worth, I, can't, I barely know how to edit. I never did computer editing stuff until I was forced to do it with this. My little brother did it for the first year, year and a half. But yeah, I have crappy production. Hopefully it's high enough information content. I'm almost done, I promise. High enough information or content that it's worth watching. But my, I know my production just sucks and whatever. I mean, it is what it is. This is, this is the YouTube channel that I'm on. My wife's telling me to be positive and to not talk about my my own insecurities or discouragements about the channel. The channel's awesome. Just watch it. There you go. I'm being positive. Thanks, Mars. Um, all right. Mountain Bike Ghost says, did you get your visectomy at Salt Cycles? Yes, of course I did. Everything comes from Salt Cycles, if I haven't said it enough. <laughs> That's funny. Michael says, hello, yum, yum. What's up, dude? Where do I put the camera when I'm recording? It sits right here on my chest. This is it right here. So I have this little bra that goes around my back. This sits right here like this. And uh, the camera films right like that. So it's an old GoPro Hero 4 with a gimbal. That's how I record all this stuff. Um, all right. Kurt Robertson says he's putting a Fox 36 on his Ripley. Dude, I think that would be pretty sick. Honestly, I think that would be... I mean, depending on what type of riding you do and where you ride. Um, like I said, if it was my only bike, I'd for sure put like a... A, a Rock Shock Pike Ultimate on there. I think that would be awesome. 
Um, let's see here. Harold says, since the SP150 150 are close in price, would you recommend the 150 as an everyday if it's lighter in the XX1? I didn't know it was lighter, but no, I wouldn't want an SP150 for my everyday bike on any, <laughs> I mean, I'd have to be riding lift service every day. That bike is a lot, in my opinion, to, to have to deal with every day. So yeah, I wouldn't be that interested in that. Um, okay. Hoping Yeti comes out with an SB120, something like the 4.5. Okay, DPMTB MMB. He just brought up a comment I really want to address. So he's saying he hopes Yeti comes out with an SB120, something like the old 4.5 in modern geometry, similar to the Ripley in travel. The SB100 is that bike. The SB100, in my opinion, is as capable through the Chundri trails and high speed terrain as the SB4.0 or as the SB45 ever was. So the SB100 is the replacement for the SB45, in my opinion. Um, and I rode them back to back multiple days. And uh, so if you haven't tried the SB100 yet, go throw a leg over the SB100. I think you'll be impressed. Um, <laughs> Some of these comments are pretty funny. Hey, people are uh, people are giving me encouragement for my YouTube channel. Thanks, guys. If this was my full time gig, trust me, I'd put together better production, better content. It'd be way better. But I mean, there's just no way I could create a you know supplement my income enough to make this a full time thing. But um, Michael Glidewell says, high crotch shorts and camera bras. Yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. James Logan says, can you test a Fazari LaSalle Peak? I'm from Stansbury Park, Utah. Would love to hear about a local bike. Yeah, man, I think they're down in Utah County. Go, go get one and demo it. I've got a bunch of buddies who ride that bike. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, just get out there and, and see what it's like. I haven't had an opportunity to ride one yet. I guess I could probably make that happen, but I just haven't done it yet. Um, uh, let's see here. Let's get rid of that. Um, let's see. I'm going to Outer Bike in October. Hey, good. The rubber side down says he's going to Outer Bike in October. Um, that's a great way. That's one of the best ways to find out what your next bike is, is to go to Outer Bike. Um, check them out. I think it's just outerbike.com. It's where, if you're not familiar, tons of different bike brands come to one location and you can just demo a ton of bikes for like a three or four day weekend. I think it's a three day weekend. And they have them back east somewhere, maybe in Ohio or Ver Vermont or something. I know that they have them in Colorado and Crested Butte. They have them here in Utah, in Moab in the spring and the fall. So it looks like it's gonna be in October. That's an excellent way uh, to find out what your ne next bike is for sure. If you have the time to take off work to go spend a weekend riding bikes, I think it's a couple hundred bucks to do. I've met a couple of people from the channel there too, the times that I've gone and it, it was really neat. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, Manuel says, why are Rock Shocks Pike over the Fox? I don't know. I love the I love the lyric and the pike. I think they're so smooth and really, really awesome. Um, I think, as I recall, the Rock Shocks Pike is lighter weight than a Fox 36. Um, so it would be a little bit stiffer than a Fox 34 and still feel really smooth. I don't know. Maybe I'd do a Fox 36. I, I think the pike's a little bit lighter weight. That's why I'd go with it. Um, hello, Jason. I recently bought a Hightower LT. How would you rate it as far as playfulness? And should I sell it to buy a Ripley? Yes, everyone should sell their bikes and buy Ripleys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's just the bike that I happen to be super into right now. Um, the Hightower LT is a super fun bike. I mean, it felt to me so similar to the original Hightower, just a little bit better. Um, but 
I mean, yeah, if I had to choose between a Hightower LT and a Ripley, I would choose the Ripley eight days a week. Uh, but uh, it's just that, that Hightower is not going to feel quite as playful as the Ripley. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'd be interested to see what the next, if you're a Santa Cruz guy, I'd be interested to see what the next tall boy looks like. I'll bet you they create some separation because the blur, the Santa Cruz blur and the tall boy are so close in rear travel right now that I think where they keep the high tower at 140, I'm pretty sure that's what the new high tower still is at. I bet you they make some separation to make that tall boy a little bit longer travel. That might be the bike to get if you're a Santa Cruz guy. I'm not, a, I, I, I think there's better bikes than Santa Cruz out there. So, um, all right, moving right along. And then we're gonna probably wrap this up. I wanted to keep under an hour. We're at 41 minutes right now. Um, Bill W says outer bike was the best trip he's ever taken in a long time. Yeah, dude, I've heard that from a ton of people. Outer bike is an incredible uh, weekend of riding. Okay, there's a great question. Eminem says, how about between the Ripley and the Rocky Mount Instinct? Man, now those are the two bikes. Seriously, I think those are the two bikes. That Rocky Mountain Instinct is so good. Oh, it builds up lightweight, which is important to me. I love light bikes because you can just whip them around so easy. It doesn't get bucked around on, on more chunky terrain because it's got 140 mil in the back, but it doesn't feel like 140 mil. It feels like less than that. And uh, they just came out with new colors. And with the new colors, they put a Fox 36 on that bike instead of the Fox 34 that had the previous two years, and they went with the 44 mil offset fork, which will give it a little bit quicker feel to a little snappier feel, make the bike feel a little shorter. And uh, I think, ah, man, the Ibis Ripley's good. I, I would have a hard time choosing between a Rocky Mountain Instinct and an Ibis Ripley. Um, I love my Ripley right now. The Ripley climbs faster. There's no doubt about it. The Ibis Ripley builds up a little bit lighter weight and climbs a little bit faster. Um, but Rocky Mountain, just the way they look too, they just got my heart because they've got that real traditional bike look, the four bar horse length, that's super active and open feeling. It's the suspension's always available to you. I don't know, man, I could talk all day about those bikes, but yeah, those are the two bikes to get. Uh, an Ibis Ripley or a, a Rocky Mountain Instinct. I, I love those bikes. Um, do I know anything about an SB100 Lunch Ride? No, I don't know anything about that. That sounds like a bike I'd be interested in, though. Um, after riding a couple bikes with Fox Live, would you consider getting it? Yeah, totally. Fox Live was awesome. If you're a racer guy, Fox Live is as good as it gets. The problem is, is it's like a couple thousand dollars. Isn't it like 1800 bucks or $2,000? Like who in the world's got money for that? I mean, I can flip a, I don't know. I, I thought Fox Life was really cool. Riding it, it's undeniable it was really cool, but that's a lot of money. Uh, Manuel says, I love your channel. Keep it going. Thank you for the $5 super chat. Thank you very much. That, uh... That helps the channel a lot. I can go buy some more uh, Coco Joys. Uh, thanks, Manuel. Um, have I ridden a Spot Man? No, but I've heard good things about it. Um, I think Dusty Betty, uh, who's another fellow YouTuber, rides one. Um, have I ridden the Specialized Enduro? Yes. I rode a 2017 Specialized Enduro, and I hated it. Oh, what a dog. That thing was terrible. Um, let's see, what's better about the Ripley over the Trail 429? The, the Trail 429 is a stiffer bike. If you're a heavier rider, if you're over 200 pounds, I think that you're going to like the Trail 429 better. That's what I think. The, the Ripley might feel, I mean, the Ripley is more like the Yeti SB100. It's not quite as flimsy as the SB100, but neither one of those bikes are super, super stiff. 
They're just a little bit lighter weight filling underneath you, and the Trail 429 didn't ever fill that weight. The Trail 429 will hold a, a stronger line in, in chundery, rougher terrain than the Ripley will. So uh, comparing the two, what was the question? What's better about the Ripley over the 429? Well, what's better about it is it builds up lighter weight, it climbs better than the Trail 429, and it's more playful feeling. It's more, it feels more alive and more connected to me when I'm riding it. It just pops off stuff and it, it just responds to my input really well. The Trail 429, that bike was uh, more racier feeling. Like when I go around corners, it railed corners probably better than any bike I've ever ridden. The, the Pivot Trail 429 hammers the corners on the downhills. You just feel like you're in a Formula One race car. It's incredible. Um, it's a very stiff chassis. The bike feels stiff. I like the riding position of that bike. I mean, I love that bike too. That bike was kind of, it was really cool. It was kind of on the heavy side. But yeah, if I were a heavier rider, I'd lean more toward the Pivot. If you're under 200 pounds, I'd get the Ripley. Um, Furon, am I saying your name right? He says, stretch it out to 90 minutes. I don't know if I can do 90 minutes. My kids are outside riding their bikes around. It's almost dark outside. They got popsicles. I'm going to probably go hang out with them here in a minute. Um, not that I don't like your guys' company too. In fact, I, 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 I should do a live stream twice a month or at least once a month. Um, Okay, Eminem says, I have an instinct, and I know you like that bike, so I had to toss that question in there. Yeah, great question. I could talk about the instinct all day. That new instinct color, if you guys haven't been over to the new Rocky Mountain website, go to bikes.com and check out the new color on the instinct. It's kind of like a tan and maroon and orange, which those three colors might sound a little weird together. I think it's stunning. Like, I'm literally about to go buy that bike right now, even though I've already owned it. It's just got my heart, man. I just love that bike. Um, Jeff B says, I have the Ritmo and I love it. Why are you getting rid of yours? It's not because I don't like the Ritmo. I mean, that's that's one of the best bikes I've ridden all, all year, the last two years probably. The Ibis Ritmo, and I love the color. I love everything about that bike, but I just, I, uh, I'm ready for something different. Um, well, here, I'll just tell you guys. The Rocky Mountain demo, or demo, the Rocky Mountain rep reached out to me and said, I just got the new colors in on the Instinct BC edition. I know you picked up a Ritmo like three months ago. If you have interest in it, I'm gonna, I can get you the best build and I'll get you a really good deal on it. And he knows how much I like those bikes and he offered me it at a good deal. And so I bought it. I'll just show it to you guys. So this is the new... I know the picture doesn't come through real well, but this is the new um, Rocky Mountain BC edition. It's a matte finish, really cool looking bike. So, sorry, I'm making you sick carrying you around, but so the rip, uh, the rip mo's gotta go. So this guy's probably, I'm gonna do a couple head to head uh, videos with this rip mo probably in two or three weeks when I'm feeling better from my um, vasectomy procedure. But that's got to go, and then the HD4's got to go. The Ripley, it's not going anywhere for a long time. The road bike's never going anywhere, and then that's my wife's bike. Uh, uh, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, the new Instinct BC Edition, that bike. That bike is really, really cool. It's a little bit shorter feeling. Um, it doesn't feel quite as long as the Ritmo, and I like that. Um, I like, I feel like I can toss the Rocky Mountain Instinct BC Edition. I can toss it around a little bit more, which is weird to say, because it's 155 millimeters in the rear. The Ritmo is 145, but I honestly feel like the Rocky Mountain Instinct BC Edition is more playful. I know it sounds weird, but I think it's more playful than the Ritmo. I think I feel like it's more alive. I like horse link suspension too. So, oh man, all the bikes are good. I can't I can't just pick one bike and ride it. <laughs> I'm always riding tons of bikes. 
So to answer your question, that's why I'm getting rid of it. Not because I don't like the Ritmo, it's just something new came along, you know? Um, what's the typical lifespan of a modern mountain bike? Dude, a modern mountain, I don't know. If I didn't do this YouTube channel, I, I, I normally bought a new bike every year. Just to, it, it was a money thing for me though. I felt like it was more affordable to find the best deal I could on a current bike, ride it for the season, sell it in the spring. That's what I did. Um, you know, I spent less money buying and selling bikes before I even started YouTube than I did on skis during ski season, if you include my ski pass to the ski resort. So, um, you know, that's what I did, but what's the life span? I don't know, like a 2016, 2017 bike, that's, that's starting to get kind of old and it's 2019 now. So like for me, probably three seasons, but here's the thing you got to remember about keeping a bike three seasons you've got to rebuild your fork and shock probably twice a year, depending on how much you ride. I end up riding like 250 to 300 hours a year. And so, you know, that's eight to 10 hours a week. Um, I'd have to be re rebuilding my fork probably at least twice a year and my shock once or twice a year as well. So if you start adding that up, it's like, Man, keeping a bike for three years, your suspension starts to feel a little wonky, in my opinion, after two or three rebuilds. And so, I don't know, I send that bike down the road to the used market. Um, but everyone's, your mileage might, might vary. You know, everyone does it differently. But if you're a dedicated biker, I don't know, two seasons? I don't know how long do you guys keep your bikes? I have no clue. I don't keep my bikes longer than six months anymore, but that's because of this. You know, when you review 30 or 40 bikes a year, it's just kind of part of the gig is getting new bikes. So, and I, that's part of the reason why I started the channel is because I wanted to ride tons of different bikes and always be riding new bikes. Man, riding new suspension all the time, suspension that doesn't have more than like 400 miles on it is incredible. Uh, you know, after 800 miles, 700 miles, you got to redo that stuff. In fact, the owner's manuals, I think, say you have to redo it even sooner than that. But anyway, uh, let's see here. Well, Bill W., you're riding a BC edition? I thought you had a high tower. What's going on, man? Um, let's see, what's the next question? What's the typical lifespan of a modern mountain bike? Have you tried any of the Intense bikes? Uh, yeah, I've ridden the Intense Sniper Trail. Uh, which was a cool bike. Um, I have a video about that. So let's see here. Justin Ramsey, go check out that video. And I've also ridden uh, Intense Primer, but not like for like a full dedicated ride, just kind of I pedaled one around a little bit. Um, bikes.com, such an awesome URL. I know, Rocky Mountain Bikes is lucky to have bikes.com as their URL. Um, Benjamin says, Matt, finish rules. Love that about the pivots. I know, pivots have good paint jobs. I really like them. Um, okay, if anybody has any last minute questions, I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna be wrapping this up here pretty soon. Um, oh, Bill says he doesn't have the BC edition. He just wants one. All right, yeah, I gotcha. So still have the high tower, that's good. Um, where do I post my bikes for sale? I post them on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, head over to Instagram. I don't post a lot in the feed, like where you scroll up, but in the stories that go across, the stories up top, that's where I post a lot. And you also get to see what bikes I'm riding sooner. Like I posted the Rocky Mountain Instinct BC edition like a, a week ago, but you're not gonna see it on YouTube for probably another couple weeks. It's all delayed. If, any, if anyone knows where to get a deal on Coco Joy, let me know, because these are like $2.50 in the store. And this one's gone. I need more Coco Joy in my life. I post my bikes on Instagram, and then there's a local classifieds ad in Utah that I post them on too. Facebook, there's lots of good Facebook forums to post them on as well. Um, have you been at all tempted in the... Deviant guide? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Sorry, dude. 
How often do you flat an ardent race? I haven't flattened an ardent race all year, not once. And I've got, I've got probably over 800 miles on my, on my uh, Ibis Ripley. And I haven't had any problems with Arden Race. Now the Recon Race, on the other hand, was no bueno. Um, I have a new Santa Cruz 5010. Any trails in Utah too harsh for it? No, not really. I mean, some of the trails you're going to have to slow down for. Like if you go up to Solitude and ride Honeycomb Canyon through the whole um, uh, rock garden, you're going to have to slow down quite a bit on, on a 5010. At least I would. Versus like a Rocky Mountain Instinct Beast edition. Um, also parts of Little Cottonwood Canyon through those big uh, boulder fields and those uh, rock gardens, you're gonna have to slow down quite a bit. Riding up at Deer Valley, if you ride NCS or Fire Swamp or Thieves Forest, yeah, you're gonna have to slow down a little bit on a 5010, but the 5010 will get you down. And heck, I could ride most of these hard trails on a hardtail, uh, but you're gonna be going a heck of a lot slower than on a Ibis Ripmo or the Rocky Mountain Instinct BC edition, right? Uh-oh, we got kids crying. That means we're about done. Um, uh, how often do you see e-mountain bikes? I see e-mountain bikes all the time. If you ever ridden an e-mountain bike, go give it a try. It might surprise you. Um, I really like the... Th uh, Austin says he likes the Thunderbolt and the altitude, but the low BB was a deal breaker for you. Yeah, you can adjust that ride nine setting to get a little bit higher and get some shorter cranks, but yeah. Um... All right, dudes, we're at 56 minutes. Thank you to, uh, to Manuel for the $5 super chat. Man, everybody, every little bit helps. I'm always happy to answer you guys' questions here. Um, for those of you who send me emails, whether you're watching this later, if you're watching right now, uh, I've not been as good as responding to people's questions on email. I don't know why. I just don't feel, I don't know. I don't feel like taking that five to 10 minutes to respond to people in an email anymore. I've just been so busy. I get a lot of emails lately. I've actually been receiving a lot of emails from people for me to, to do contract work, to do a video is where I'll plug their product. Um, and, and I just don't have time to be doing that. Although, fair warning, I do, I, I, I signed a contract with Competitive Cyclists to do a video for them. Uh, I've shopped at Competitive Cyclists my, for the last 10 years, you know. Uh, and so, uh, backcountry.com and competitive cyclists. If you don't live in Utah, if you live in Utah, support Salt Cycles. They are my bike shop. They support me so much. They they like what I'm doing. They get me great deals on bikes. What so makes it possible for me to do this? They're getting me bikes that, to demo all the time. They've just been so much help to the channel. But um, if if you're not local or you can't buy from Salt Cycles, then buy from Competitive Cyclists and use the links in my videos. That helps out a lot. Um, we're about ready to go. John Larson, thank you for the $5 super chat. He says, thanks for the live stream. Hey, it's my pleasure, man. Um, my wife and kids are ready to, to go outside and ride bikes and hang out before it's too dark. But thanks, everyone, for joining me. Um, go get yourself a Lab Austere hip pack. Um, he's giving us 25% off. None of it comes back to this is not for me. This is uh, this guy is starting this company, and they're legitimately, I just think they're awesome hip packs. They're minimalist. I think they're awesome. Um, use the links in my descriptions below my videos uh, to buy your product. Uh, if you're local, support Salt Cycles. And buy trail truffles because they're giving me free trail truffles. <laughs> That's the problem with sponsors, man. People give me free crap and then I have to tell you that it's good. But the reality is that I, I've been eating the trail truffles for like a year now. It just so happened that he wants to give me the product for free if I plug it on my channel. So that's the problem with sponsors, man. You can't, you can't trust someone who's, who's getting free crap. I just, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I love the YouTubers out there and the other athletes who get free stuff, but Jeff Kettleweed is an incredible writer and he's a great character. He looks like a good dude. If you don't watch his channel, I watch almost all of Jeff Kettleweed's videos because he's a nice guy he's well spoken he's polite whatever he's all the good things and he's an incredible writer who produces great content but when he says the ibis ritmo is the bike to get i feel like yeah well how much are they paying you to say that and look i get it he needs to make a living and do his thing too uh but you know anyway so go buy trail truffles because they're the best they'll make you faster on your bike more handsome, 
get more girls, get better grades in school, do better at work, eat trail truffles. Yeah, that, that's what it is. <sighs> oh my gosh, that's so dumb.